Good afternoon, we are in the beautiful Cuenca in Ecuador and today I'm going to take you on a little walking tour to what I consider to be some of the coolest spots here in town. So let's do this. First, I want to give you a tip on where to stay here in Cuenca. I'm staying at El Cafecito Hostel. It's run by a guy named Tony. He's an amazing guy, full of great tips, very knowledgeable about the city. So I'm really enjoying my stay at El Cafecito. And the location couldn't be better. It's right in front of Mercado Nueve de Octubre. That's where we're going first. And I believe we're going to find a lot of pork there. So let's go check it out. So this middle floor is where you find all the fruits and vegetables you could possibly imagine. And there's a wide variety of stuff here in Cuenca because it's actually between the coast of Ecuador and the jungle. So you can find pretty much any fruit or vegetable you can possibly fathom here. I actually just stopped at one of the stalls here and I'm having myself a corn pancake with cheese inside absolutely delicious so warm and i got it with a little hot chocolate so walking tour is starting off pretty well if you go to the top floor of the mercado you're going to find a very typical ecuadorian dish made from pork it's called ornado uh, i just ate as you saw I might try it later in the video and on the top floor you can also find a wide variety of juices made from all the different fruits that they have here really cheap and they have lunch options for like three dollars. I had that for lunch yesterday. They have plenty of vegetarian options as well. There's plenty to eat here at Mercado Nueve de Octubre. And if you want to get meat at a good price here in Cuenca, the bottom floor of the market is basically just meat. It's like a huge butcher shop with all of these stalls providing you with all your meat needs. So this market in Cuenca is a must when you are here. Now we're going to go check out a pretty big tourist attraction here in Cuenca. It's basically just a broken bridge. Not sure what to expect of it, but I guess we'll find out soon. So let's go check out Puente Roto. A worsening economy in Ecuador. Rising prices and shortages of food and fuel have led to more than a week of protests. Due to the protests, getting to Cuenca certainly wasn't easy. The buses weren't running, so we had to hire a private driver. He was only able to take us to the point where the roads were closed by the indigenous people of Ecuador. So, in the town of Sayao Si, me and my travel buddy Camille crossed the roadblock on foot and took a taxi to our final destination, Cuenca. The people shall not be moved. They will not be moved. This is their town. This is their city and we are going to have to go around them. They're there for a reason. I don't blame them. I would join them if I had the time. But I'm only here for 12 days. <laughs> Cuenca needs me. I need Cuenca. <laughs> Get that. Get that luggage to Cuenca. <laughs> Leave my roller bag alone. <laughs> well, this morning, um, Arthur and I and all of the, and the hostel had... Sorry, I'm a little high. Can you start it over again? <laughs> Arthur and I and everybody in the hostel had a nice little orientation so Tony kind of told us where to go in the city center. Went to the museum, it was very interesting, not like super exciting, but behind the uh, museum is the river. So I got to take some video, um, it's a little hard here with the altitude, but for the most part it was a great morning and I'm so happy to be in Cuenca. I have made it here to Puente Roto, I'm pretty sure, um, I think it's a little underwhelming. I was expecting like a wooden bridge that was going to be all broken up. So it's pretty much just a stone bridge that goes all the way there. But I believe there's a nice view of the river here. So let's go check it out. This river area is really nice and calm and peaceful. Apparently it's also a really good place to do your morning exercise as you can see there. I personally would come here and read a book easily. There's also a really nice cathedral right there and I want to take the opportunity to say that Cuenca is probably Ecuador's most religious city. There are 52 churches in Cuenca and it's not that big of a town so that's pretty impressive. I don't believe we're going to be going into any of them in this video though. A short walk away from the broken bridge, you can arrive here at Parque de la Madre. Cuenca is actually home to Ecuador's first gold medal athlete in the Olympics and he won the medal for speed walking. So through all his success, 
this park was created and they actually put a speed walking school in the park and there's also tracks around the park where you can train. So just a really great place to come do some exercise. They also have a planetarium here. Even though we're not hitting any churches today, I am making my way to a monastery actually where they have cloistered nuns. That means that the nuns live there and they are not allowed to leave. They never leave the monastery. What's cool about this monastery is that they produce wine inside. So you can actually go to a little window in the monastery and get yourself some nun wine. It actually started raining a bit, but the video continues. Behind me is a huge cathedral called Immaculada Concepcion. And right next to that cathedral, there is a flower market. It's actually quite beautiful. A lot of flowers in a very small space, some children playing around, some food stalls. And this is also where you find the wine made from the nuns. All you have to do is rock up to this little window. They sell the wine by the bottle. I didn't know that. I thought you could get a glass. But lucky for me, they also sell what can only be described as flower water. And you can get it with sugar or without. And it's actually really tasty. <laughs> so now I've come back to what I'm pretty sure is the main square here of Cuenca. I have my flower water. It's pretty much just like a sugary, flowery juice. The weather is not very favorable at the moment. So we'll see where I go from here. I'm actually back at the market from this morning because it's just about lunchtime and I thought this was a great opportunity to come and try that pork dish. So I'm about to go in there to get some ornado. Let's check it out. behind me but I must say this ornado is already delicious the pork is just so tender and they give you some rice and salad and I'm about to find out what this yellow thing is admittedly I'm not a pork guy but that was the best pork I've ever had in my life no joke it was so tender and it came with yapping gacho which is like a typical potato pancake here in the highlands of Ecuador. As far as the pricing goes, they had like a three, four, or five size dish. I just went for the $3 one and it was certainly enough. That's all I needed for lunch. So definitely recommend the Ornado at Mercado Nueve de Octubre. So after having that delicious pork, I contacted some people from the hostel, two Irish folks and an Aussie guy, and we're gonna have some beers at a pretty popular spot here in Cuenca. It's called Yodoko, and it's like a Belgian brewery kind of thing. Not a bad Saturday. And that's Yodoko right there. And it's just in another lovely plaza with another cathedral or church and a nice little peaceful area to relax on a Saturday afternoon. But let's get to the important part. I'm so ready for this. This <laughs> is exactly what I wanted. Is it more or less than you expected? It's, it's, it's like a milligram less, so let's just round it out to zero. <laughs> Wait, maybe I should have this boot on. Then there we go. I purchased a little, a little boot. Uh, it's a little lighter holder. Engraved. Hummus. So, Fantastic. The guy, he was a G. He did it for me. And how much did you pay? Two dollars. So you're happy with your purchase? Super happy. So that all happened yesterday and I definitely recommend Yodoku for a nice Belgian beer in Cuenca. Cut to today and we just took a bus for about an hour, an hour and a half outside of Cuenca, deeper into the mountains and we are at an orchid farm. Let's see what these orchids are all about. An 
as it turns out, this is actually the second largest orchid farm in the world. If you're curious, the first one is in Thailand. The guy here was just saying that orchids take four to six years to grow to their maximum potential. And we just checked out some baby orchids. So cute. This orchid was the winner of the 2018 orchid competition. It's amazing. Before it was white, now it's red. Best orchid in the world. Best orchid in the world, right here. I'm just blown away. There's live music. That's what you're hearing in the background, this beautiful windpipe, indigenous to the land of Ecuador music. It's beautiful. And then the orchids have been gorgeous. We learned that orchids are intersex, like carry female looking genitalia like things in their flower. So that's exciting. Take a look. No, on top. On top. There you go. Ah! <laughs> Monkey face orchid. <laughs> you said this is the the only black orchid. Oh, in the world. Yeah. Cool. The species that come from Brazil and Ecuador. A lot of the orchids here have a very distinct smell, like I just smelled one that was really fruity and then another one had actually a chocolate smell, which is incredible. <laughs> of course the British lad had to It was the Aussie as well, don't blame up. just me. <laughs> Brit and the Aussie. And it seems like our tour of the orchid farm ends on this cable bridge here, which is quite shaky. Now we're just gonna go pay our tour guide. I think it's gonna be like $5 for the tour. So come check out the orchid farm here, close to Cuenca. Interesting music <laughs> and beautiful flowers. What did you think of the orchid farm experience? Depends on what it cost. I think I would pay like three dollars for it but i wouldn't pay five how are you gonna take this back to boston i'm not i'm gonna leave it for the hostel oh do we get the bus I gave the guy my bus so we walked about uh, 40 minutes on the road after leaving the orchid farm and it was not a nice walk i definitely don't recommend it you can get a cheap taxi here to galaseo so we're in this village of galaseo now and just behind me is a local market with tons of typical Ecuadorian food. So I have a feeling you're gonna see some guinea pig again. I won't be eating it. I'm going for something else today. I think it's called, fuck, what is it called? In Cebollado. That's it. It's delicious. Two fifty, two dollars. I don't know. It was cheap with an Oreo smoothie. Delicious. Very typical Ecuadorian here, Oreo smoothie. Classic dish. I have gotten the ceviche de pescado, fish ceviche. My first time having it here in Ecuador. I'm gonna put some lamb in there. And it was only two dollars. And let's see what it's all about. Very tasty, good temperature. I mean, for two bucks, can't go wrong with that. How did you do that? Just ripped it up? Well cooked. Yep, very well done. Yeah, let's have the last. I'm now back in the city of Cuenca, such a lovely little place. Voted three years in a row the best city to retire in. So there's actually a huge community of Americans here. It's estimated that about 4,000 Americans, mostly over the age of 65, live here in Cuenca. And I don't blame them. This is definitely a place I would spend more time in. Unfortunately, I only had around five days here, but I would easily spend 
three months to six months to who knows how long living here in Cuenca. Unfortunately as well, I'm leaving Ecuador in two days and I'm headed to Bogota in Colombia. So if you want to follow along on the journey, just click on this Colombia playlist. I will see you over there in Colombia in three, two, one.